Okay, so talk about a movie today. This is the number six, I believe, in East's Cornucopia of Horror, uh, a movie. And this is called We're All Going to the World's Fair. So I'm, I was hesitant to even put this on here as a horror movie, but I feel like a lot of people are going to watch this or have heard about it, and it, they have it in their head that it's a horror and I don't even know how to describe this movie, but I guess horror, drama, experimental film. First off, this movie's on HBO Max. It was at the Sundance Film Festival, but it's on HBO Max now. And the the thumbnail of this is like a girl, I have it pulled up on my computer. It's this girl with like weird glow paint on with this like fake eye thing. The thumbnail is very clickbaity. It, it, it's, that's what it is, okay? It's just a clickbaity thumbnail. Like, it's the kind of thumbnail where if people were to talk about this on YouTube, that's what they would use as the uh, the thumbnail of their video to get you in. Look at this crazy, scary movie. It's not. It's not like that at all. Um, but that's what they, they're using for the thumbnail. Like, you know, the whoever made this movie, so whatever. Um, this movie is getting pretty good reviews. It was terrible. We've had a lot of negatives this year with my horror movies, right? Although there's been some good books, and I'm reading another good book right now. Um, but it was just bad. Uh, this movie is basically about this girl named Casey who lives her life on the internet. She's obsessed with the internet, and she does this, like, TikTok YouTube challenge called, you know, like, 3 a.m. challenge. We're all going, uh, the World's Fair challenge, you cut your thumb on, you put the blood on something, and then you say, like, I want to go to the World's Fair, like, three times, kind of like a Bloody Mary. And then she hooks up with another guy on the internet that is in that same kind of um, community as her, and he's like, oh, tell me if anything happens. Things are supposed to start happening to you and changing. And it's kind of like a um, creepypasta. Like, this whole book, this whole movie feels like a creepypasta that was filmed, made into a movie, you know, and it has that, it's kind of touching on that. It's touching on characters that are obsessed with the internet and people who are very isolated. And it's talking about these creepypastas where if you're not familiar with what a creepypasta is, they're short horror stories on, on Reddit. Um, some of them are really good. Some, some of them aren't, but there's some great ones and some of them are serialized and you'll get another chapter every week. Great stories though to check out. Um, but the whole thing with that is that everybody kind of plays, like pretend like they're in character. When people comment on these creepypasta stories, they comment in character like, oh, I hope everything's okay. And I hope that John got to call the police, you know, like that kind of stuff, which I kind of find weird, but you know, whatever, it's not hurting anyone. But I normally just like to read the stories and then go about my way. But that's the thing. And that's kind of how this movie is. This character that she hooks up with talking to you know on the internet he's the one that you can tell he's playing pretend but he's like asking her to like keep updated and then basically near the end she starts to get sucked into this and he kind of pulls her aside and calls her on skype or something and is like hey uh you know we're just playing pretend right like this isn't real because you're getting really and she starts doing weird shit like she's like staring at the camera in the middle of the night like in her sleep and she, like, takes her dad's gun and is, like, thinking about, like, fucking killing her dad. Like, it's, it gets, starts getting really weird. She starts doing weird things. And that's that what the guy starts getting nervous. Like, oh, you're sure I'm not doing this for real. And then she says, no. She gets mad and says, no, I'm, I know this is pretend. And then he never hears from her again. And in the epilogue, he's also living in this huge, like, abandoned McMansion thing that he lives in. And he... Then he tells a story about how he met her, like, a year or two later. And she's living in Manhattan, and she, like, started a theater company, and they went out for lunch or something, and then they said goodbye, and they never saw each other again. And that was weird, too, because it was clearly not true. Um, so that's the that's the whole plot, okay? In about four minutes, I just explained the plot. Um, and there's about four minutes of plot in this movie. I, it's shocking to me that this movie is 90 minutes long. Going back to my point that this feels like a creepypasta... It does. It feels like a sh like a 30-minute short film that they stretched into a 90-minute movie. There is not enough plot here for this. 
and you can tell pretty quickly because there are just scenes of nothingness in this movie. Like, there's barely a plot in this movie. It, it's, it's outstanding, honestly, and, like, how slow it is. This is not for everybody. A lot of people are going to watch this because they're going to see the thumbnail. People are going to watch this because they heard about the, you know, on YouTube or whatever. I, not a lot of people are going to like this. Like I said, it is so slow. They're just long scenes of the character dancing or doing weird things. Everything is so slow. Barely any dialogue in this movie. Like two characters. It's just, it's like, oh my God, make it end. And it just feels pretentious. It feels like this is a low budget movie. They they didn't want to make a standard cheap slasher, so they tried to do something artsy. It feels like a movie that was made for a film festival, which it seems like it was. And on one hand, I kind of applaud them for trying to do something different with this kind of thing, especially with the budget, not going that standard route, doing something highly experimental. I have to applaud that to a degree. But on the other hand, it's just not good. There's, again, my main points, there's not even a quarter of enough content here to make a 90 minute film. And it constantly feels pretentious. And these long scenes are just like, what are you doing? It, and the theming of this movie at times is on the nose. And, and, and that's what makes it feel pretentious. And at times I'm like, I don't really know what the fuck's going on here. This just feels like nonsense. Um, like there's a scene, there's not, it's not really a scary story overall, but there is one kind of creepy scene with something that I don't want to, I kind of spoiled like the whole fucking movie, but she, there's this like kind of jump scare scene kind of where she sees a creepy distorted image of her face on a projector and they make you watch her. She basically to go to bed at night, she watches an ASMR video on YouTube, like kind of playing into the fact that her, she lives her life on the internet. Like she can't even go to bed and watch unless she watches a YouTube video of somebody talking in her ear. They make you watch the whole fucking video, okay? I'm not kidding with you. I'm being dead serious. They make you watch the whole three minute ASMR video. It's like, what the fuck is happening? And I get what they were doing. They wanted to, you know, especially using ASMR, they wanted to calm you down, lure you into a sense of relaxation, and then they hit you with a creepy thing. But it's like, you don't need to show me the whole three minute video. You could have made it 30 seconds of her watching. You could have made it 20 seconds of her watching this ASMR and then had this thing pop up and it would still spook you. You know what I mean? It's like, there was no reason to show. It just was like, holy fuck, why are they showing this whole thing? And that's how like the whole movie is. It's just the scenes are like, what am I watching? Like it felt like ad-libbed a lot of times. Like they just let this actress ad-lib. Um, Anna Cobb was the actress who played Casey, the main character. It's not even her real name. And it's like everyone's saying she did a great job, too. She's a little kid, I think. I don't know how old she is. She looks like she's a teenager. She did fine. It wasn't, like, mind-blowing acting, but, I mean, for a kid, I guess it was fine. But it just felt like she was ad-libbing a lot, or the script was, like, nonsensical. Um, I guess, on one hand, I kind of commend her for doing this, uh... I'm sure the script was, like, really hard to decipher. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know what more to say about this. It just was so freaking weird. And not weird in a good way, not weird in an experimental, artistic kind of way. Just, like, they tried to do it like that. And and it was very on the nose and pretentious. And just, like, what? It's just, I, I don't know who this is for. I recommend it. Just check it out how fucking weird it is. It's going to be a waste of your time, but I still... Just check it out. You have to... Just, it's bizarre. You don't see ones like this often. Will I ever watch it again? No. And a lot of good could have been done with this. Um, it could have been shorter. It could have been longer. And, and expanded upon in a couple sections. But it was just kind of a failed product, I think. Um, just weird. I don't know. And the ending, it was very weird, this JLB character that she's talking to on the internet, who's this older guy. I never got the vibe with him. Like, at times it felt like, is this guy like a pedophile? Because you immediately get pedophile kind of vibes from this guy. 
like and I thought is it gonna go that route like Megan is missing kind of route where she you know befriends somebody on the internet that's not who she thinks and I don't know if it was trying to say that but the guy never does anything wrong it's like he's actually trying to help her at times he's the one that kind of tries to break her out of her obsession but then at the end he tells this fucking weird story and I'm like why would you tell this clearly fake story you fucking creepy weirdo but then at the same time I was like you know like you know i'm sure a lot of you have experienced this you play on like xbox live or whatever with these people who you don't even know what their real names are but you know their gamer tags and you have a great time playing with these people for sometimes years and then they one day they're just gone you never see them or hear from them again and that's kind of the feel of the end of this movie so i thought maybe is he is that what he was doing trying to like tell the story to keep that thing going i don't know how many stars does this get Man, I don't know. I appreciate that they tried something different, but like two out of five, maybe even less. It was a slog to sit through. It was probably the worst paced movie I've ever seen. Honestly, I'm still recommending it because I just want you to experience what I experienced. Anyways, that was we're all going to the World's Fair. Um, no, not good. Not good. I don't like to see stuff like this. Okay, bye.